This is a quick tip on utilizing the USB uh, dongle, the WS2000 from Spectrum. It's a DSM uh, interface, basically, so you can use your uh, DSM compatible radio as a simulator for your computer. I'm just going to show you how to quickly bind it. It's very simple. Uh, you do need to first create a model, which I've already done. Uh, on the basic level, you really just need the four control surfaces, uh, aileron, elevator, rudder, throttle. Uh, you you want to use uh, various uh, landing gear, flaps, flight modes, things like that in the simulator, you'll need to set up switches for that. Plenty of videos on that, including some of my own, but uh, uh, you're going to want to go into your model setup. I'm using version 285 Edge TX, uh, my internal module, set it up for multi, uh, DSM, you can just set it for auto. Uh, it does automatically populate to X2F. Uh, if you do set it to auto. So you really don't need to use auto. If you want to just set it to DSM X 2F, it'll work. Scroll down to bind and get ready. You don't click it yet, um, but just be, get it, uh, your cursor over that so you're ready to bind. And then when you, there's a button here on the, the dongle that is the bind button. You hold that button down while you insert that into your computer. Let me show you that. I'm holding it down. As I insert it, and the light starts blinking. Now I'm going to click on bind, and then uh, the light will blink. And then when it goes on steady, that means you're bound. Now if I go into a simulator, uh, you'll need to go in and set up your, your uh, transmitter control surfaces and all that. You might have to reverse some things in the simulator or in the radio, one or the other, uh, but you'll need to set that up like you would any other, if, even if you're using the USB interface just with a cable, you'll still have to uh, configure those control surfaces and stuff for that, but uh, that's how you bind, it's very simple, as long as you get a steady light, uh, you're bound, so now I can use this wirelessly to my simulator, yeah, and uh, this one I'm using my uh, RadioMaster TX16S 4-in-1 uh, as the transmitter, uh, obviously the Spectrum dongle is going to work with any Spectrum compatible transmitter. I've got a, uh, an, a Spectrum NX6 that would work. I've even got an old uh, Spectrum DX6i that would work just fine as a wireless transmitter as well um, to, to link up to the computer as a simulator because the, you know, particularly the old DX6i doesn't have any way to plug into the computer. There's no USB cable. so. That actually allows you with this wireless dongle to be able to, to use that transmitter as well. But I like to use it. You know, you don't have to fumble with the cords. You don't put extra wear and tear on your um, USB ports, plugging uh, cables in and out frequently. You know, they're designed to last a long time. But, you know, in my opinion, the less wear and tear I can put on those cables, the better. Um, and then whenever you've got a cable plugged into it and you're using the transmitter, there's always a risk you're going to, you know, knock the cable and maybe bend a USB cable, break it off, something like that. So it's just a safer way to do it, in my opinion. I just don't like messing with the wires if I don't have to. So uh, Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Now, if you want to stick around for uh, another few minutes, I'll uh, show you a couple of things on setting this up in uh, Real Flight Evolution. Uh, now I've got the WS... 2000 bound up to my old uh, Spectrum DX6. I created a model called Sim. Uh, it just has some basic controls and uh, this is only a six channel radio so I don't have all these other switches doing anything but for this application I've got this one set up for my flight modes and then the flap switch works in case I get a model that has flaps. So I'm going to set up those two so let's jump over to real flight and uh, I'll show you uh, a couple of things on setting this up. So right now the plane's just taken off because I don't have it uh, set up with the, the controller's not set up right now. So let me go here. You want to go up to this menu and click select controller. And I already created one that's called the X6i, but it's blank right now. So you go to the controller, either a blank one or find another one that's close and you can modify it. Let's go in there and then we'll edit that. <clears throat> so. Uh, all you really need to do is set up each of these. They all see how they all say unassigned over here, <clears throat> and my sticks don't work. So you know, right now, the sticks don't do anything. So what we're gonna do 
is come over here and click aileron first. Once I click that, then I'm going to come and move my aileron stick, and you can see that it uh, now it recognizes that aileron stick. Do the same thing for each of these. Now let's click the elevator, and then just move your elevator. It'll populate that. Throttle. We'll move the throttle up. Okay, now you can see that that's moving my throttle. Uh, next we'll do rudder. Come over here and move the rudder. So now we got rudder. Uh, and in this particular case, since this radio only has the six channels, I'm going to set up flaps. So now I want to move my flap toggle switch. Now you can see that my flaps are moving. <clears throat> now you can see it's going from zero to 100%. That's uh, because I've got the radio set up to do that for the flap setting. You can program that in your radio to go all the way from minus 100 to plus 100 or just, uh, you know, mid-range to high. That's just scaled for your flaps. Uh, the next thing I need is my mode. So this channel right here, I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to move my mode switch. That's this one over here. So now I can switch between safe and AS3X with that switch. And that's the one I usually use when I'm flying. Flaps, I usually use one over here. Uh, but for the DX6, I'm just going to use the one that's labeled flaps. So I've got that. That's all I got to do. Then you save it, or you do save as if you want to give it a new uh, name. So I'll just hit save. And then I'll close that. Hit OK. And now just hit the space bar. You can reset the airplane. Now you'll see if I move the throttle. Let me turn the volume up a little bit. Okay. Now I do have an issue, so if you see here, if I put right rudder in there and I go, I'm actually turning left, so I need to reverse some controls. Let me uh, turn this around, see if any of the others need to be reversed. Okay, so we know that rudder is backwards. Elevator is correct. Aileron. Aileron is backwards as well. So let's go back into the controller. We're going to change aileron and rudder. Go to controller. We're going to edit. And then uh, for ailerons, we need to reverse those. And rudder, we need to reverse that. Hit save. Close. OK. Now if I move my aileron, now the Right one goes up, left one goes up, that's good. Elevator, rudder, now my rudder is correct. So now everything's working as it should. That's good. So that's really all you gotta do. Now I check my, uh, check my flight mode switch. Now that's working in reverse too. I prefer it to go the other way in my real planes. When I push that switch forward, it puts me in safe mode. So let's reverse that. Uh, this airplane does not have flaps. I can't check that one on this plane, but let's go to select controller again Go to edit Scroll in here to mode and we're gonna reverse that Okay, now if I flip the switch There I got s 3 x and intermediate now since the DX6 I only has a two-way switch I don't have intermediate. I could change that if I mixed in uh, with the uh, different channel or a different value on that if I had a zero value or I could just change the mix on the radio and make that zero to plus 100 rather than minus 100 to plus 100 then I could uh, correct that